If you're just starting out building a bubble app, then welcome to our channel. We are Planet No Code. We've got hundreds of bubble tutorial videos uh, for people just like you from beginners all the way through to advanced and you can find them all on our website planetnocode.com. You can find videos there that you can't even find on YouTube. But this is my beginner's guide to the bubble database bubble is a fantastic no code web app creation tool it really excels at building web apps and uh, i'm going to explain to you some of the key points of understanding how the database works so uh in bubble you've got these tabs down at the left hand side you've got design that's where you design your ui workflows where you create your workflows and we're going to be focusing in this video on data and so your data it can help to think of this like a series of sheets in excel or if you are a bit more modern maybe uh, google sheets um, and so all of my data types represent a sheet and i've got a lot of data types in here because this is an app i keep coming back to and using throughout all of our video demos so if you see anything that you like here do a search on our website because you'll find content all about it such as how to generate ai images um, and uh, so creating a data type uh, so let's do one for this video I'm going to say let's create a data type called book and bubble supplies some built-in fields uh, such as who created it when it was created when it was modified and a slug uh, the slug is part of the URL if you were to link to a page all about this particular book um, the keyword there to look up in our library is type of content uh, then you can set the slug or like the you know slash uh, Harry Potter would be one way of setting the slug for a Harry Potter book um, and we can then go ahead and add in extra fields so a book is definitely going to have a title and the title I'm going to set as a uh, text and the title is also um, a book is also going to have an author and so I might want to have an author data type in my database. That way I find, can find it really easy to display books by author. So let me add in an author data type. And the author is going to have a name. And now I want a way of saving author into a book. So I go back to my book and I create a field and I can create a field called author. Now, some books have got more than one author. So actually, I can say uh, this field is a list. And that allows me to list more than one author into the uh, book's author field. Um, let's put some data in that and give it a go. So I'm going to go into books and uh, let's create a book here. And um, um, <laughs> I've got to think of a book uh, off the top of my head. Um, OK, we will just go with Harry Potter. So we create a book and that adds an entry into our database. And it's important to recognize that this has a live effect on my preview or my development app. Your bubble app has at least two separate databases, your dev version. This is where I'm making all these edits, creating all of these extra data types and your live version. Now they are completely separate. So this has created an entry in my books. Uh, database uh, for Harry Potter but it's not going to appear in my live apps database even if I push the app to live that's going to take across every, anything I design on the page or my workflows uh, all my data types and all my fields but it won't actually take the app data across you can do that though manually by using the uh, copy and restore database but but make sure you read all the uh, precautionary text about doing that so you don't overwrite something that's important now I want to set an author for Harry Potter uh, and so I go into authors and I can add in uh, JK Rowling I think I've spelled that right uh, and then I can go back into books and edit and I want to add in JK Rowling but I'm not seeing JK Rowling in this selection and that's because I need to set the field for me as a human to view the readable data. What I mean is that every entry in your bubble database has a unique ID, just like this. But how do I know which unique ID that represents? Well, I need to tell bubble to put a text label there instead. And I can do that with primary fields. And so I find author and I say use the name field. Uh, and so now if I go back in, I can go JK Rowling 
and I get JK Rowling and I have to click add. Now this is because it's a list and I can click save. And now it has added that entry. Uh, it has created a database relationships between those two entries. If I go back onto author, or the author does not have in and of itself a link back to Harry Potter. Uh, it is Harry Potter has a link through to JK Rowling. And so that's like a one way relationship in the database. And you may find, uh, that when structuring your data, there is a particular way. One way, do you go from A to B or B to A, uh, with your fields in order to be able to represent, uh, your data on, on a page? Also consider workload units. Are you having to search through thousands of records when you could, in fact, uh, search through a fewer number of records, depending on how you structure your data? And if you do go with bi-directional relationships, I'd recommend using something like data based triggers to make sure that they are always in sync because the worst thing would be that um, books Harry Potter links it has got an association to JK Rowling but for some reason in my app JK Rowling doesn't have an association to Harry Potter uh, so that is oh I'll do one one more thing because it's so important and uh, you don't believe how easy it is to miss is privacy rules uh, and so imagine my user is uh, you, you've created an app for your users where they've got their own personal library but it, it should only be accessible to them at the moment any book and any author is completely publicly visible just like a blog post in fact someone with the right tool set could basically scrape all the data from my bubble app about all my books and all my authors but what if I want to make it so that if a user creates a book only they can see it now only they can see it in the app you as the app creator can always go into app data and you can view all the data here so be careful with who you give access to your bubble app to um, but on books I would uncheck all of these everyone else fields because I want it to be private and then I can say something like current you um, it doesn't matter which around you do this I don't think we can say this books creator is current user and like 90% of the time that is the appropriate privacy rules expression. Uh, but obviously it depends on your app. If your app has got an organization feature or a team feature, you're going to need to find a way of sharing data across multiple users, but restricting it to the particular uh, team or organization. That is my beginner's guide uh, to the Bubble database. If you've got any questions, leave a comment down below. We love responding to them. Uh, we also love sharing our pre-existing videos. Like I say, we've got hundreds of them. So ask a question, good chance. We've already got a video and we can send you a link to watch it right away.